Hello and welcome. We're at Connecticut College in New London, Connecticut. This is the semifinals of the National Prep Basketball Championship as Woodstock Academy takes on the top seed, Putnam Science. Once again, hello and welcome. I'm Glenn Conticello along with Adam Finkelstein. Adam, it has been a great couple of days thus far. We've got the semifinals today. We've had some thrilling finishes so far. We fully expect that here today. It should be two local rivals getting after it. They only, uh, they're about five minutes away from each other down the road and in the national semifinals. Should be a fun one. Well, if you have not watched prep basketball, it is just about like watching tennis. It's up and down and up and down, and they finish most of the times as well. So uh, this should be, I would expect, a high scoring affair. We haven't seen too many games it's in the 60s. It's going to be very up tempo. Yeah. There's a ton of talent. It's a college rules, so it's a full 40 minute game. And uh, usually it's the first one to 100 wins. Well, these two teams come in and they've got a lot of fire apart. It's difficult, uh, Adam, to focus on one player for each side. But if we do, let's talk about Putnam Science, a cook, a cook. The uh, junior at 6'8", uh, with a double-double in the uh, quarterfinals, 22 points, 12 rebounds. They rely heavily on him. He's having a great junior year. Well, he's long, he's bouncy, and he's skilled. So he's the type of guy who is the, very much the modern-day big man because he can stretch the floor. Uh, with the shooting range, the three-point arc, but he can also protect the rim. Trey Mitchell pumped in 20 points yesterday in the uh, quarters for Woodstock. He's at 6'9". We expect a lot of action from him here today as well. Another junior big man for Woodstock, but a different type of big man. He has uh, got that broad build. He's very, very skilled, great hands, and can really pass. Opening tip controlled by Woodstock Academy. They are in the white. First attempt taken from beyond the arc. Tay Perry and uh, Ty Perry off the mark, and it's an early rebound for Putnam Science and their first possession. Ty Perry, the Fordham commit, he is a volume shooter, so he's going to get them up in a hurry. If he starts making them, they can go in in bunches. Asuni A, low left baseline, could not hit the turnaround. And it's an early start for these two teams, 11 a.m. here in New London, Connecticut. There's a three that's put up and in, a long three by Trey Mitchell. Well, we talked about him, Trey Mitchell. He is super skilled, and he can stretch the floor from behind the arc. He can also go to the post. Talked about his passing ability. He can turn both hands with his back, turn both shoulders and score with both hands with his back to the basket as well. Ball goes low for Asunier, knocked out of his hands. Able to give off to his teammate, the runner by Mavala. No good. A contact there, but they uh, say it was just deflected out of bounds, and Woodstock will get it back. And Putnam starting a very big lineup here today with the Sunni and Josh Mabala along with the Cook. So a Cook really at the three goes to show that the size and talent at this level, because a Cook is going to be a four, if not a five, at the next level. But he's here playing the three in this prep game. Into the paint, turnarounds caught up and rattled out by Mitchell. Had a good look, could not finish. Quickly ahead, runner is blocked on the glass. Mabella's shot blocked, got knocked out of bounds. Great defense. Jamara Wilson that time, he's a steal in the Patriot League. Gonna be an absolute star, I think. Quick inbounds, the shot no good. Mabella's shot quickly coming right back. That runner was blocked, but we get a foul. Well, Ja'Kai Dotton, one of the things he does as well as anyone is initiate contact. He's got that pit bull mentality and such a strong body. See right there, he waited to the last second, leaned in, got the contact, and kept the ball in his outside hand, which is really important. Fouls on, a cook is first. First point for Dotton, of course, first point for Putnam Science. He's on Check that. Stop. Correct. <laughs> now, this is a little bit different than the last time these two teams met. They met in December in Springfield, and that was a game that Putnam Science dominated right from the opening tip. So already, this one has a much different feel with Woodstock being able to start on a 4-0 run. A little over two minutes in, Putnam Science looking for their first points. Lofton out up top. Bella driving, his runner way off the mark, but 
He ran into Mitchell and we get the call against Trey Mitchell. If you recognize one of the officials we have here today, it is, if you're especially from Connecticut, John Gwynn, of course, played for Jim Calhoun, who's also in the audience here tonight, or this morning, and he has been officiating for a couple of years now. And been officiating at the Division I level yeah. for a long time. He's, he's a, the instant offense at UConn, the microwave, as yep. he was called, could fill it up. Mavella gets the two free throws, and he gets Putnam Science on the board. It is four to two. Putnam gonna play a lot of this two, three zone here tonight. They really, as we, we noted their size, especially along the front line, three to five. They put that size and length in the back line and really shrink the floor on the defensive end. Romero Wilson, 25, is up on up top. Although goes left side for Perry, his three's off the iron. They battle for possession on the rebound and it's gathered in by Dotton. He gives down low and that shot by Mitchell is blocked. Again, the follow by Dotton is blocked away. Well, that again is the size and the length. And now they're changing ends. The big fella going to LaSalle, showing his athleticism. Osuna Sunie with his first bucket. Ties it at four. Asunie is really a great story. He was a player that no one even knew about a year ago. LaSalle found him, true under the radar guy. He arrived at Putnam, referred by the LaSalle staff, and he's really come on strong this year, doing a great job of developing his body. That three rattles out. Quickly ahead, that runner's banked in. Well, you talked about the tempo and back and forth, they go. There's that long three. It rattles out by Wilson. Jose Perez is a similar type of player to Ty Perry for Woodstock. Two guys who volume shooters take some tough shots, but when they start making them, they can get hot in a hurry. They fight for the rebound. We get a hell ball. And Putnam will keep possession. Baseline out of bounds look, screen the screener action. Perez open in the corner. That's a much better look. Yep. Rimmed out. <laughs> out up top, that three's off the front of the iron, taken by Elijah Buchanan. Elijah Buchanan is a New York native who recently made a verbal commitment to Manhattan College where he'll play for Steve Masiello. Got incredible length, the six foot 11 wingspan on a guy who's six foot four. Yeah, that is quite amazing. Woodstock showing pressure. Mustang's able to break it and they come ahead. We've had some changes, we'll give them to you as we go. This is Lofton driving into the paint. Shuffle pass down low for Reed, who just checked in, and Kareem Reed could not hold on and fumbles it out of bounds. And you know, it was a tough pass by Lofton, thrown into Reed, who's just a sophomore in traffic. Tough spot to be in early in the game. Lofton's got to read the help side just a little bit better. Flex action here from Woodstock. Rodriguez out up top. Doten now, low right baseline, he feeds, but on the pass, we get a whistle and a foul away from the basketball. And it's gonna go against Reed. Well, Reed didn't like it, but that's, a, that's just a young mistake, is he's gonna learn how to three-quarter the post as he gets older. He was okay with his arms, but his hands, he's gotta split that, I'm sorry, his feet, he's gotta split that body at Trey Mitchell. 
Again, the 2-3 from Putnam. And you can bet Woodstock was expecting this. This has been Putnam's trademark defense over the years. They work it on the perimeter inside five seconds, down to two. One, does he get the shot off in time? They say he did. We did not hear a buzzer when it did get to zero, Adam. On the rebound, we have a foul. was on Elijah Buchanan. Officials now discussing, they did not hear the 30 second shot clock. No, I didn't hear it either. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's, I mean, it is loud in here, but. Tony Espinosa and his. Tom. Uh, Tom Espinosa in his 12th year is questioning what's going on with that shot clock. He was bouncing up and down because he thought it did expire before the shot. Tom was a heck of a player back in his day, and you can see he's still got the vertical. But we talked about how Woodstock was going to be able to expect that 2-3 from Putnam. Conversely, Putnam was going to be able to expect this full court pressure from Woodstock because that's been a trademark of Tony Bergeron coach team for a long time. On the side of the lane, the shot by Mitchell, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds off of Woodstock. Putnam has possession back. They lead by two, six to four. Putnam able to break the press. That shot well off the mark by Cam Gooden. A corner three that also misses by Damar Langford. Number two is Joey Kasperzak, of course. He had a big uh, basket in overtime to win it yesterday for Woodstock. He was the hero of the game yesterday, trailing by one point with under 10 seconds left in overtime. Kasperzak goes the length of the floor and makes that contested finish at the rim to give Woodstock the the win and the, at the rim, I should say, to give Woodstock the win and a spot in the semifinals. Foul line, Mitchell backs it out. Buchanan. After that, going baseline amongst the trees, we have contact and we've got an offensive foul. Josh Mabala, the big fella, he's got, I'm sorry, that's Kareem Reed, the youngster. Taking the charge that time, got set. Great play there from the sophomore. We talked about his post defense a minute ago, but that time showing a good defensive IQ. Slide over, get his feet set, and absorb that contact. We have not had points in a while here. Teams are getting shots off, just not able to finish. Again, press being applied. Again, Putnam able to break it this time. They're able to finish. Well, that's another sophomore, Hassan Diara, in his first year in the prep ranks. He's got that big, strong upper body, and he can take contact. Been a great finish with his left hand. Putnam leading eight to four. Coaching 12 and a half remaining in this first half. Casper Zach's long three is way off the mark. Yeah, that one was a little deep. And again, Kasper Zick's a player whose his jumper has improved significantly over the course of the last year or two. But his, his best attribute is his speed, his quickness, and his ability to get to the rim. Gooden facing a double team at midcourt, and he throws it away. Kasper Zach with the steal, and he lays it in. Woodstock creating offense from their defense. No one in the country does a better job of that. And again, that has been the way that Tony Bergeron teams have played for years. Deep left corner three rattles out by a cook. And on the rebound, we get a foul. Great rebound from the big fella. Talked him about him, excuse me, talked about him again. 
going outside of his area. I can't emphasize enough what a steal this was. In, in this day and age, you don't see recruiting steals or secrets anymore, but LaSalle really found one in this guy. It's totally under the radar at this time last year. Skinny but long and just a raw talent. And he's really started to put it all together this season. Ryan Omslayer picked up the personal, his first. You, you talk about the depth that you're going to see here today. Every player who checks in the, the game for either team is a scholarship caliber basketball right. player. Yep. And so you're, you're coming off the bench with, with Division I guys, sometimes even, even high major guys. So there's an incredible talent, not just in this game, but in the prep ranks in general. Wilson was open at the foul line, but not hit. Putnam by three, they have possession. Nice feed to the cutting loft in. Couldn't get the shot near the hoop, and that's because he was hit pretty good, and he'll go to the line. Well, it was a really good dive cut there from Lofton. He uh, he got the ball inside, and then instead of standing and watching, he made that cut away from the ball. I, I refer to that as a Dwayne Wade cut. It's a cut that became popular when Wade was playing with LeBron for the first time in Miami. When LeBron had the ball, he's such a good playmaker, you've got to create spacing, but Wade, not a great three-point shooter, so he made timely cuts to the rim and, and made that a much more popular cut, especially off dribble penetration. Lofton did something very similar right there. Holmes Lair picked up his second. Second foul shot rims out by Lofton. This is Debaji Walker with the ball, 24 in white. He is the son of former NBA player Samaki Walker, recently committed to Cleveland State. He's got a ton of upside. Kasperzik walked that time, but trying to find his rhythm after a big day yesterday. More pressure from Woodstock. Lofton is maybe the only true point guard on this Putnam team, so it, it does make them a little bit more vulnerable, potentially, to defensive pressure. They like this lineup where they play with the three bigs, and that is especially unusual in this day and age. Strong drive by Josh Mubala, could not finish. Ball did get deflected out by a centaur, so the uh, Mustangs will inbound on the thrown basket. That runner lips off, and a Hard fought rebound by Wilson. Yeah, second consecutive defensive rebound for Wilson. And again, he's headed to Lehigh next year. I expect he'll be one of the better freshmen in the Patriot League. A guy who didn't have a Division I offer as a high school senior last year in Chicago. Deep corner three is put up and in by uh, Chalin Martin. Sacred Heart signee, known for his athleticism, but been working hard on his shooting stroke, and he showed it there. And there's a long, very high arcing shot by Okoko Cook. Well, that's his bread and butter. That pick and pop at the top of the key, he's gonna make that shot over 50% of the time, and it's incredibly hard to guard because he's got that high release. Tough drive and able to finish was Walker. Well, that's the upside. The Baji Walker, we talked about him a moment ago. Samaki Walker's son, he's got terrific length, just starting to fill out his frame, but has a ton of untapped upside as he moves on to Cleveland State. Could really emerge in the coming years. Lofton's deep three off the iron and the offensive rebound by Perez. All right, to put up a foul shot, but it was Deflected away and going coast to coast is Martin and we get the offensive foul. I thought the officials made a very good no call in the last possession. Putnam tried to take a charge but wasn't there. That possession was different. Nice job getting set, maintaining that space. Martin's just got to do a better job of avoiding that body. 
Very good crowd on hand here for this 11 a.m. start. This is the first of two semifinals that we will uh, air for you here on Cox, your view. And of course, the championship game is this evening at 7.30. Low left baseline, Osunye's turn around, no good. The follow is also no good by Lubella, and now we get a foul on the pass. You see the length of Asunye there? <laughs> he wasn't even in the mix, but just to have that long arm to be able to reach above the pack and tip it out to himself, that's a big time play. Fouls on number 10, Ty Perry, only his first. It is the seventh team foul on Woodstock, so It'll be a one and one here for the uh, Mustangs. Well, you mentioned the quick turnaround tonight and uh, Putnam Science by virtue of having the top overall seed in the tournament earned the right to play early this morning. So you get, albeit only two hours more of rest, it is, it is more, not as quick of a, a turnaround. You know, we talked about this last year and last couple of years that we've done this day where you get that turnaround where the championship is the same day and we, we're like, wow, I can't believe these players can do it, but we sometimes forget they're 17 or 18 years old and they can easily do it. They're not like uh -oh. us. Big finish by Luis Rodriguez. There aren't many guys who can easily do that. I'll tell you what, the Californian native showing a big time hops. Eight minutes remaining in this first half. Lofton driving with the left hand, lays That's it in. Big time play from Kyle Lofton. He's a righty to come off and make that play and that finish with his weak hand. And we talked about a couple of guys who've really emerged in the last year. Nobody has improved more over the course of the last 12 months than Kyle Lofton. This was a guy, another guy without a Division One scholarship at this time last year. Heavy pressure gets the turnover and the lay in for Jose Perez. Jose Perez, as tough of a customer as you will find, ultimate competitor. First field goal for Perez, he's got four. Putnam by a half dozen. Into the paint, spinning was Mitchell as he took the shot, he got fouled, he'll go to the line for a couple. Yeah, it was Mabala reaching in there. Got him on the left arm. We talked about Mitchell's dexterity in the paint. It means he can turn both shoulders, score with both hands. In fact, I think he may almost prefer the left hand jump hook. And he was starting to turn for it that time. Mitchell, as I said at the top, had 20 points in their quarterfinal victory over the defending champs, Brewster Academy in overtime, 94-93. And a big second half. Second free throw is also good. More full court pressure from Woodstock. Nice skip there. Good in left side, feeding. For Lankford's three, it's no good, and the rebound deflects out was off of a uh, centaur, so the Mustangs will keep it and inbound underneath their own hoop. Well, that was DeMar Langford, who is the younger brother of Providence freshman guard, Makai Ashton Langford, who won a national prep championship, at least one, with uh, Brewster Academy. Took the MVP, as I recall, that year as well. Putnam has three sophomores on the floor right now. Driving was Hassan Diara, his runner off the mark. There come the Centaur. Down by four. Pass for Zach, backs it out for a three from Mitchell, no good. Well, Mitchell, we talked about how a cook can play the pick and pop game. Mitchell can as well. It's a wide open three wow. that rims out, but the rebound was tipped in. And they give it to Cam Gooden. Yeah, Cam Gooden showing his bounce, flying in off the weak side, the soft hands to tip it up and in. He came out of nowhere. He did, gotta box him out on the weak side of the floor. Mitchell's three, short. 
And it's Rodriguez with the rebound. Rodriguez, again, he's got great size and strength on the wing. Speaking of strength, Ja'Kai Dotton. Dotton's first attempt was blocked, able to get it back. His follow-up also deflected. He still has it. Backs it out. Casper Zach's open three. No good. And now we'll get a loose ball foul on Luis Rodriguez. Rodriguez just knocked good and <laughs> out of the way. That was football style. You respect this hustle. He's saying, what did I do? <laughs> just going to get that ball. Now it's difficult for the officials that are here in how they are going to officiate a type of game like this. It is very quick, but it's also physical, and you don't want to blow a whistle on every play. That was clearly a, a foul, without a question. And, you know, I think it's... I think it's one of those things where when, when you get officials for games like this, you want college cali caliber officials, college officials, yep. but you want guys who have experience in the prep ranks so they understand the nuances of the prep game, specifically the, the, you know, the level of contact that you, you referred to. And I think so far this has been a very clean first half. Absolutely. I'm not saying they're dirty on either side. It's just a very physical game. No, and I meant the officiate. I think they've called it cleanly the Absolutely. first half. Absolutely, yep. Now we get a foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Cam Gooden. That will be his first. Well, Ja'Kai Dotton, who, who plays the point, but really really isn't a prototypical point guard, looking to take advantage of that big, strong body by taking Gooden down to the block. Rodriguez misses badly with his three-point attempt. And it goes out of bounds, so Mustangs will have possession. Five nineteen remaining in this first half. You see our score in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Putnam Science has pretty much led throughout. Have not really been able to extend the lead as Woodstock have hung around. Well, the thing about the Woodstock pressure is, is that you're not going to get a steady diet of any one look. They're, they're going to have a few different presses in their playbook. That one was a 2-2-1. Trying to force the ball to the outside third of the court along the sideline. Just got a little physical with the midsection there. And you see Jamuriel Wilson checking out for Woodstock. He picked up the personal, only his first. Does send Lofton to the foul line, and he hits the front end. Much lower scoring first half, and you alluded to that earlier, Glenn, and we expected to see more points. And I, but you have to give both teams credit for their defense. Very different approaches on that end of the floor, but both of these teams really competing and defending in the first 15 minutes here. And again, with the pace we have seen, both teams going deep to their benches, but that's not unusual, as no. Adam said a moment ago. I mean, they, both teams can go deep and bring on the exact same caliber of talent. And that's Kasprzak really going coast to coast. Almost exactly like the layup he made to win the game yesterday. Coast to coast. That's that speed and burst. He's also got great touch around the rim as a layup maker. Another unsigned player here today. An undoubted scholarship level player. Great defensive play there by Ja'Kai Dotton. And they will give possession back to... Uh, the Mustangs are now the officials are discussing. John Gwynn going up to talk to uh, Tony Loud, and yes, they're going to give the possession to Putnam. Diara inbounds. Well, Sunni A. They back it out as. Diara will control the offense out up top. Sunier. Diara. Good action. There's that three rattled in by Gooden. Well, you see that a lot in the college game. The sideline, pick and roll, hit the replace guy. If the replace guy's a shooter like Cam Gooden, knock that down. Putnam lead now extends to nine. That's their biggest in this first half. We approach four minutes remaining. Kasprzik can't hit. Rebound deflects off the glass. Pulled down by Dotton. Got deflected out. Again, that's just the size of Putnam. I mean, when you've got a cook, a cook who's every bit of 6'8", 
And very long and bouncy at that play in the three in that zone. And that shot way off the mark. Mustangs ahead, right corner three, rims out from a cook. And the rebound also rattles out by Langford. Casper Zett coming ahead. Hands for Moore, who just checked in. The shot was no good, and the rebound pulled down by a cook. The athleticism we're seeing around the rim right now at both ends is just tremendous. Nice defensive play by Casper that can't finish, but he was fouled. And see, again, the way that he leads with the body, when he is in attack mode playing north to south, that is when he is at his best. So much speed and quickness. Just a natural playmaking instinct, and he's had it since he was a youngster. Follows on a cook. That's his second. So potentially costly there for a cook. It would assume that he'll go to the bench for the rest of the half. Only three and a half left to play. And he will indeed as yep. Jose Perez coming in. Now this becomes a, a more conventional lineup for Putnam. We talked about how they typically play three bigs. Now Jose Perez moves over to the three. You get. Lofton, who's a natural point guard, back in there next to Gooden. So this is much more of a conventional, I'm sorry, even a smaller lineup. I didn't see Langford in there. So it's really a four guard set for Putnam here with Perez at the four next to a single big. First time today that Woodstock has had the, the, the bigger lineup of the two teams on the floor. One of two for Joey Kasprzyk. 26-18. Mustangs with possession and have the lead. Spinning was Asunie lost the handle. And as he tried to fight to get the basketball back, he picks up a personal. Well, and that's a, a mistake that, that so frequently you see from young players, compounding the first mistake with the second one. You get frustrated and you make an emotional decision, trying to pursue that ball and end up costing yourself a foul. And now Woodstock will be in the bonus on the next foul. Centaurs come ahead and facing the Putnam zone defense. But again, it's a smaller zone, so we'll see if Woodstock can crash the offensive glass. Well, that's how you bust the zone, by hitting from the perimeter that time as Kasper's fired up a three, but he was off the mark. And again, you want to try to force the opposition, the offensive team, to take those long shots with the hope that they miss, and you get the rebound and get a chance to score on the other end. And that time, the shot was no good, but on the rebound, we get a loose ball foul, and again, it's on uh, Asun Asunye, and that's his second. So now it's Woodstock, I'm sorry, the Putnam front line starting to get in some foul trouble here as a Cook and Asunye both on the bench, and now Mabala comes in Basically playing the five. And he has a foul here in this first half. So he has to be careful. He's going to be in the middle of it. And uh, he doesn't want to try, uh, pick up his second as well. And we still have 229 remaining in the half. Now Putnam does have a uh, another big body on the bench we haven't seen yet. Gabe McLaughlin is a, another, <laughs> believe it or not, another Division One player. He's got three offers to his name. So there is there is still more size yet to come from the Mustangs. The lead for Putnam now, down to six. It was nine just a moment ago. Lofton to the foul line for Perez, has it stripped and stolen by Kasprzyk. Coming ahead, lays it up, and no good. Mabala with a big time rebound. Now Putnam's got numbers. And Lofton, before he gets a shot off, we get a reach in. And that's just a mental mistake. Marquise Moore comes down. Anytime you reach across the body like that, it becomes an easy call. You have to reach with the inside hand. Send Lofton to the line. Two possession game right now. Chance to push it to eight. 
always such a big believer in the importance of the first two minutes and last two minutes of every half or period. And I think in this game in particular, you know, it could be very important. The team that is able to take that momentum into halftime here, Putnam can continue to win the next two minutes. They make it a three possession game, get it close to 10. Conversely, Woodstock could, if they're able to make this a one possession game, all of a sudden they go into the locker room feeling really good about themselves. One of two for Kyle Lofton. He's got a half dozen, and it's 27-20. Kasperzik playing the point. That's what you love about Kasperzik. He's a true combo guard. Sometimes people use combo guards as a term for somebody who doesn't really have a position. Kasperzik is a true one because he can play the one or the two. More miss from the foul line. He was wide open. Sort of took the shot falling away. Putnam with possession. Wide open three for Lofton. That shot is short, but he goes right after the rebound, gets it, and he is fouled on his way back up to the iron. Well, he knew it. As soon as it left his hand, he knew it was short, and so he chased it. You always hear all the parents yell, follow your shot, follow your shot. Typically, that's actually not very good advice, but in that, that possession there, it was, because he knew it was off as soon as it left his hand. The problem is if he doesn't get that ball, Putnam then becomes totally exposed in their transition defense. But of all the players out on the floor, the shooter has the best angle to see if that shot is going to be on the market. Well, and you've got that feel. Lots yeah. of times, as soon as it leaves your hand, you know if it feels good or it feels a little off. Mustangs by eight. Now we get a whistle. Might be a kick violation. Ty Perry has been quiet. He took that three on the first possession of the game. We haven't heard from him since. More spinning at the foul line. And as he spun into the paint, had it deflect off his hands and out of bounds. Well, I thought he thought he should have shot it right there on the catch. Now Putnam taking a little bit of a chance, bringing a cook back into the game with those two fouls. He's got to be very smart here. Bit of a chance by Tom Espinosa for Putnam Science. See if it can pay off. Minute remaining in the half. Lofton. Perez going baseline. The shot no good. Rebound is tipped in a tough follow by Mabala. Well, what happened there, Perez drove the ball so hard that it required a second Woodstock defender to come over and help, and that's what left Mabala uncontested on the, or relatively uncontested at least, on the offensive glass. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Smart move by Kasperzik, though, to try and drive a cook. Long three is put in. Big shot. Ty Perry. Putnam had just pushed that lead to double figures. Ty Perry with a great response there. 15 seconds to play. Well, he should hold for the final shot. Lofton driving, and he had it deflected and stuffed away. Here comes Perry into the paint. No good. Quick turnaround. That shot at the buzzer is short by Perez and the half comes to an end with Putnam Science leading by seven, 30 to 23. You are watching the National Prep Basketball Championship. This is the first of two semifinals here on Cox. Your view, we'll take a break and come back with some first half numbers and more, so stay tuned after this. Maddie always just, she gave it her hardest and what she wanted everyone else to do was to give it their hardest. She always put everyone before herself in every situation. Her personality, it's just Maddie was, she was born to be a leader. She lit up every single room when she walked in it and she just had so much love for everyone in her life. I think she'd want us to live in the day and she'd want us to take it one day at a time. 
With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. Get brand new movies at the touch of a button with Movies On Demand from Cox. Daddy! These two dads have co-parenting on lockdown. <laughs> but when their dads show up, it's more daddies, more problems. Cut like butter! Isn't that a... <laughs> Cut down cell phone tower. Don't Daddy's Home 2, rated PG-13. Watch what you want, when you want, with Movies On Demand from Cox. With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly, so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into my account at cox.com today uh. so you never miss a thing. Your View celebrates Women's History Month, spotlighting the Women's March. Since 2017, millions of women around the globe have marched to bring awareness to a range of important issues. Women are affected in every marginalized community, um, every aspect of our society. The most important thing is that people recognize women's rights are human rights. The Women's March has attracted a diverse group of women, all committed to creating social change. And these movements allowed a lot of women who wouldn't have spoken up to speak up for the first time and know that they have this voice of a million women uh, behind them, helping them to speak up. A key goal of the Women's March is to encourage all women to vote. So it's important for us to now have our voices heard and voting is the basic way to do it. People are getting a sense of being stronger together. Uh, I think in the long run we'll see those effects um, making a difference in everyone's lives. This celebration of Women's History Month is proudly brought to you by Your View. A three for the game. You want more of that? We got you. Half season, half price. Wow. What a finish. Get access to all the teams. We got to see Oh, it. you just want to watch your team. No sweat. It's all about us, nope. Anytime, anywhere. It's that easy. To order NBA League Pass, call 844-371-3529. Maddie always just, she gave it her hardest and what she wanted everyone else to do was to give it their hardest. She always put everyone before herself in every situation. Her personality, it's just Maddie was, she was born to be a leader. She lit up every single room when she walked in it and she just had so much love for everyone in her life. I think she'd want us to live in the day and she'd want us to take it one day at a time. In the blink of an eye, cities fall, heroes rise. A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip, and heartbreak leaps from the brink in a blink. Just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies in the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. And welcome back to Connecticut College here in New London, Connecticut. We are at the half. 30-23 is our score. This is the first of a doubleheader of uh, prep basketball action we, are ha we will have for you here on Cox. Your view here this morning, game one, is now the uh, second semifinal. We'll follow immediately in about 20, 25 minutes after this one ends. And then they have 
the final set up for this evening at 7.30, and many might say, that's kind of crazy for these players, but we forget they're 18 years old, and we sometimes remember that we're not 18 years old, so they can, they without a question, can handle the turnaround. They take a break, and uh, some, if they have a hotel locally, will go back to the hotel, but most will relax some location in this area and then come back in the evening after having a team meal uh, a couple hours prior to the 7.30 tip-off. But it was uh, quite a day here yesterday with the uh, first round action. We had some great finishes that led us to the final four here today. And this first semifinal with the top seed Putnam Science leading at the half 30 to 23. We'll take a break, come back. Adam will rejoin me. We'll run over some first half numbers and have the second half tip for you right after this. Stay tuned. Your View celebrates Women's History Month, spotlighting the Women's March. Since 2017, millions of women around the globe have marched to bring awareness to a range of important issues. Women are affected in every marginalized community, um, every aspect of our society. The most important thing is that people recognize women's rights are human rights. The Women's March has attracted a diverse group of women, all committed to creating social change. And these movements allowed a lot of women who wouldn't have spoken up to speak up for the first time and know that they have this voice of a million women uh, behind them, helping them to speak up. A key goal of the Women's March is to encourage all women to vote. So it's important for us to now have our voices heard and voting is the basic way to do it. People are getting a sense of being stronger together. Uh, I think in the long run, we'll see those effects um, making a difference in everyone's lives. This celebration of Women's History Month is proudly brought to you by your view. A three for the game. You want more of that? We got you. Half season, half price. Wow. What a finish. Get access to all the teams. We got to see Oh, it. you just want to watch your team. No sweat. It's all about us. Nope. Anytime, anywhere. It's that easy. To order NBA League Pass, call 844-371-3529. In the blink of an eye, cities fall, heroes rise. A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip, and heartbreak leaps from the brink. In a blink, just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies in the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. Back to Connecticut College here in New London, Connecticut, the National Prep Basketball Championship. This is uh, the first of two semifinals we will have for you here today on Cox, your view. And Run Conticello with Adam Finkelstein. Adam, uh, you and I were chatting about that first half. We're going to go take a look at some highlights here. A lot of action, a lot of defense, very physical for both sides. That might have Putnam in a bit of foul trouble. Not sure. We'll see how the first couple of minutes go you in the know, second half. I thought it was a really well-played first half. It's, it's lower scoring than we anticipated, but you've got to give both teams credit and their, their work on the defensive end of the floor. And to your point, Putnam's got to continue to defend, but do so without fouling. Well, as we take a look at the first half highlights, again, we see a lot of outside shooting, but we also saw a lot of action in the paint. Well, that's that zone in the, in the length of Putnam's zone where they start those three bigs and they're all long and athletic, and if they can create offense from their defense, that's something that both teams will look to do. They do it in different ways. Putnam utilizes their length in the zone. Woodstock going to get out and press. But again, you see, now this is what happens when you don't force that turnover. You give up potentially easy baskets on the weak side of the floor. And that was a big time finish by Luis Rodriguez. Down in transition, and that is something that I expect we'll see more of in the second half. Both teams getting up and down. That was Cam Gooden with the putback there. And there we see a long three. Again, each these teams can fill it up from long range. That was Cam Gooden. Ty Perry, that was the big shot there. Just 30 seconds left. Putnam had just pushed that lead to 10, so a big, big shot from the Fordham commit. 30-23 uh, is our halftime score. Adam, you had a chance to uh, listen in with both teams at the half. Yeah. What do you expect here in the second half? Well, I think the you know it was interesting to see both teams down there in the locker room. Woodstock immediately went into the locker room. Coach Bergeron immediately addressing his team. Putnam, it was more of 
you know, the coaches stopped and met as a staff outside, and they were just going in as Woodstock was coming out. So I think that's the, the veteran uh, uh, leadership of Tony Bergeron knows exactly what he wanted to say. He was concerned about his kids getting more post touches against this Putnam zone, specifically with their bigs in foul trouble, wants to attack those bigs, get the ball inside, and when they're playing in the half court, play inside out basketball. Now both of these programs are looking for their first national championship. Of course, this is the first year for Woodstock Academy at this level, and that's a, not a bad first year to get into the final four with your hope, obviously, of getting into the opportunity for the grass ring. Well, I'll tell you this. It, it is as seamless of a transition as I've ever seen from a first-year prep program. I mean, one, to hire a coach like Tony Bergeron, you're hiring someone who's been here before. As a matter of fact, he's been here now with three different teams, so incredibly exp as experienced as any coach you're going to find in the country. But you've really got to be impressed by the overall resources of the Woodstock program and what they've done to that campus and what they've done to support this new postgraduate program. Kyle Lofton, a senior, led Putnam in that first half with seven. There you see former University of Connecticut head coach. He's now retired from University of Connecticut, but he is now the director of basketball for St. Joseph's University. And and he is not overseeing the women's program there. They are now including uh, men at the university. It's been always been a female-only university, and he is overseeing that uh, startup, which begins uh, next season. Well, is there, for a Connecticut school that has historically been all female and looking to expand to include men for the first time, is there a better, uh, in the state of Connecticut, is there a better building block than Jim Calhoun? I'm not sure there's a more recognizable figure anywhere in the state so what a hire from St. Joseph's as we start this second half Woodstock had possession but fumble it away it came out trapping out of the 2-3 that time and it wasn't just trapping the first pass on the wing but getting that secondary trap in the high post as well Perez driving into the paint, his floater's no good. Got his own rebound, puts it back up, also no good, but we get a whistle and a foul. Well, those are two of the strongest, toughest kids you will find in Jose Perez and Ty Perry. And Jose Perez, I, I think he rolled his ankle a little bit yesterday. He looks a little heavier on his feet than normal here today, so he doesn't have the, the quickness that he might otherwise have, have, but bullying his way inside, trying to take that contact from Ty Perry. You just allowed those arms to start coming down. Putnam signs led by as many as 10 in the first half. Woodstock never led in the half. Second foul shot was no good. The offensive rebound put back also no good. And here come the Centaurs. Ja'Kai Dotton going right at the body. Out up top, Rodriguez is wide open. His three is no good. How about the lift? The Cook didn't get that rebound, but see how he was up above the rim to pursue that ball. You know, one of the interesting things for this team here, everybody on the floor for Woodstock is a guy who has seen their recruitment improve exponentially in the last year. So Ja'Kai Dotton, what had one of the best MIA careers in recent memory at Cambridge Ridge in Latin, but was largely under-recruited. Talked about Jamero Wilson, didn't have a Division I offer last year in Chicago. Here you've got Luis Rodriguez, has pushed his recruitment to mid and high major levels this year at, at, uh, at Woodstock. And now Ty Perry, no Division I offers to an Atlantic 10 player. Tough shot that time by Perry. Putnam comes right back off the rebound. They push it ahead, and Perez buries a three, and we've got a timeout. Great spacing on the break there. Perez getting wide and spacing deep in the corner. Good recognition from Kyle Lofton to advance the ball. 36-23 is our score. We'll take a break and come back. Stay tuned here on Cox Your View. Maddie always just, she gave it her hardest and what she wanted everyone else to do was to give it their hardest. She always put everyone before herself in every situation. Her personality, it's just Maddie was, she was born to be a leader. 
She lit up every single room when she walked in it, and she just had so much love for everyone in her life. I think she'd want us to live in the day, and she'd want us to take it one day at a time. Finkelstein back at Connecticut College at the Loose Field House. National Prep Basketball Championship semifinal. Game two will have Northfield Mount Hermon School taking on Tilton School. That'll come up immediately after this one is over. And we've played just shy of two minutes of the second half and Putnam Science has extended their seven point halftime lead. It's now 13. Well, they've started to play well. Woodstock missed some, some things at point blank opportunity against that zone, just the size and length inside of Putnam, but a big possession here from Woodstock. Still 15 on the shot clock, plenty of time for the Centaurs. They go baseline. Great hands. Yeah, able to feed to Mitchell, got it blocked away, but the loose ball taken by Wilson, and he buries the 10-footer. So good perseverance there. Mabala came up with the big block, but Woodstock hung around. Jamero Wilson got the ball at the high post. It wasn't conventional, but gets him. A very important too. Lofton driving into the paint, lays it up, and in. Tough shot, nice finish. Well, as expected, the offense starting to pick up here for both teams. Here comes Ty Perry. He's a guy who can shoot you out of a slump, and there it goes. That high release. And a quick timeout by Woodstock. 38-28. It's a 30-second timeout, but we will step away for 30 seconds and be back. Stay tuned. With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into my account at cox.com today uh. so you never miss a thing. Adam Finkelstein back here at the National Prep Championship. First of two semifinals for you here on Cox, your view, and this is a good one. Putnam Science, top seed, leading Woodstock Academy, 38-28. Woodstock is the fourth seed here in the tournament. And off the timeout, Putnam with possession. Couple of shots, not able to finish. Coming right back, that shot by Perry, no good. Got the uh, loose ball right back to, oh, that might have been a travel, no call. And now that runner by Rodriguez swatted out of bounds. Well, Mabala there with the emphatic blo block, but the best defensive play was the stunt from Akuka Cook, who, who made that fake at the ball. It was enough to free, free Rodriguez and allow Mabala to recover and get back to being in a position where he could protect the rim. Cam Gooden up top. Akuka Cook feeding down low for the big guy, Mitchell, and uh, I think I said a cook, a cook, I apologize. That uh, pass down low was for Mitchell, and he could not hold on. Pass was from Rodriguez. A cook, a cook to the foul line. Perez, turnaround's no good. Got his own rebound. That should not happen. I mean, for him it should, but not by the... Uh, Woodstock Centaurs, nobody put a body at him, and then he finished. Well, you know, that's the thing that Putnam might be their most defining characteristic is the way in which they pursue the ball off the glass. Not really a big blockout team, but they go get that ball. That three by Rodriguez rims out. Quickly ahead, that runner as Mabala tried to slam it, but he got hammered, and we get the foul. Well, a good play there by Rodriguez to take away what would have been an easy two, and more than that, a potentially momentum-changing play. Josh Mabala will go to the charity stripe for a couple, and we will get almost wholesale substitutions 
by Tom Espinoza. That oh, free throw. Hey, well. hey, hey. Nor'easter conditions. <laughs> Breeze is still a factor. I'm going to tell him you said that. Ah. <laughs> I'll see if he's able to uh, make some adjustments here on this second free throw. He was two for two in the first half from the charity stripe. We might get five new players on the floor for Putnam Science if this free throw is made, and it is. So Tom Espinoza does replace all five on the floor, and we'll give you the changes as we go with 15.42 remaining in the second half, and the uh, Putnam Science lead is 13. So from a rotation, rotational standpoint, one of the tough things about trying to match up with Putnam is you have different looks. We've talked about how they, they'll play three bigs at the same time, but right now they've gone back to that four guard lineup. Tough shot, but able to get it to fall was Martin. Chaylin Martin with the big play and finish there. Martin's made a couple big momentum plays, making the most of his minutes off the bench. The Sacred Heart signee start at Weaver last year where he won state championships. Reggie Hatchett was his high school coach, played along with Keandre Fair, who ironically played at Putnam Science a year ago, now at Coppin State. Mustangs breaking the pressure. They come ahead, and now as a shot was taken, they'll wave it off by Cam Gooden. It was... Uh, a turnover, I guess he stepped on the sideline. Putnam still in that zone, but again, this is a smaller zone. Good opportunity for Woodstock to get on the offensive glass. Get the ball inside, then crash the offensive glass. Well, loose, and it is the Mustangs that come away with it. They're running, but they throw it away. Tough pass by Langford. Well, we talked about DeMar Langford. He, he's uh, the younger brother of Makai Ashton Langford, but a different kind of player. Makai, much more of a point guard, whereas DeMar a wing. Not necessarily the dynamic playmaker his, his older brother was, but he has an incredibly mature floor game, typically. Tight defense by the Centaurs. Or correction by the Mustangs. It will be Centaur's basketball here. Number 30, Elijah Buchanan fires his shot off the mark. Got his own rebound as it was deflected right back to him. And he gets stripped, but it was last touched by a Mustang. So the Centaur's will inbound along their baseline. saying that shot did hit the rim, so the shot clock should have reset. And, oh, the officials conferred, and they uh, yeah, said I didn't it, think did, it, I didn't think it, it did hit not the hit the rim. Yeah. Right. So it's 10 seconds on the shot clock. The breeze is a factor for both teams. Yeah. Well, that's a deep three by Kasper Zach off the mark. That's what I mean about DeMar's uh, floor game. It was one on two on the glass there and still pulled out that rebound. Oh, the putback by McLaughlin, almost able to get it to fall as he gets his first action here today, number 54, and he sets up and takes the charge. Well, Gabe McLaughlin, the guy we said we hadn't seen in the first half, comes back and makes a big play there. Second foul on Joey Kasperzek. Woodstock applying the pressure. Gooden feeding ahead. Good touch pass there from a cook. Defensive transition from Woodstock. Langford driving, shots no good. Like that quick second bounce from Trey Mitchell. Talked about guys who have made strides this year. Trey Mitchell's conditioning, the improvements he's made with his body over the course of the last seven months, has just done a fantastic job. 
Out up top for Buchanan, his three's no good. And on the rebound, we have a loose ball foul, and I believe it's gonna go against McLaughlin. It is. Just trying to buy them a couple of minutes there with the cook. Oh, here's. Now well, McLaughlin checks out. Sunie comes back in for the Mustangs. Deep three, Kazbrzak buries it. Got one, he's been working for that jumper. Got one to fall and all of a sudden it's seven. Pressure being applied by Woodstock but we will get a foul in the backcourt and it's gonna be on Rodriguez. That should be his third, we'll double check. It is. It's gonna be interesting now if these guards, because remember, Langford and Diara, I'm sorry, Ashton and Diara, both just sophomores, so it's tall task to handle the Woodstock pressure when you're still relatively inexperienced. Tough drive by Gooden, got the shot off. Now yeah. Putnam's gonna retain possession there, but it was a great block out, or at least slide, for Ja'Kai Dotton to come in and cut off a cook a cook because he was gonna have an easy block out. So Dotton saved, he was gonna have an easy put back. Dotton saved what would have been a very easy two for Putnam. Yara out of top. He'll tough fire shot. a three, yeah, very tough. No good. Offensive rebound by Osunie. Perez runner off the mark. Very rebound. good defense. Yeah, battling for the rebound, and it is the Centaurs who have it ahead. Kasprzak driving, got a shot off. And, and that's, that's where he's so good, Glenn. If you can get Kasprzak the ball with the wind at his back, I mean, in the open floor, he is as dynamic as they come. DeMar Langford picks up the personal, only his first. Three second half team fouls on the Mustangs. As Prezik is one of two from the charity stripe here. Both those shots coming in the first half and he misses another. His release is still on the low side, but his mechanics, we talked about his improved shooting and it, he's making strides. He's not yet, doesn't shoot the th percentage he, he would want from the three-point line, but his mechanics are much better than they were a couple years ago. And he misses them both. The deficit remains seven for Woodstock. With the pressure, they get the steal. Dalton backs it out for Kasprzak, and his three is short. Another turnover, though, from Putnam. Kasprzak driving, runs into a defender, and we get a blocking call. Well, it was the subtle change in direction in the Euro step there from Kasprzak caused the defender to slide just a little bit to his right, and that was the difference between the charge and the block call. Well, Zan Asunie, that is his third. Get another look at it there. Yep, you can see you gotta take that contact in the middle of your chest. That one was on the outside of the shoulder. Nine points now for Joey Kasprzak. Putnam's lead down to six. They had it up to 13 just uh, about two minutes ago. Well, they've gotten stagnant on the offensive end. Wood Woodstock's done a very nice job of turning them over, not allowing them to get any sort of rhythm offensively. Nice dribbling by Lofton. Wow. Comes ahead and lays it in. Kyle Lofton, big time stuff. And that is a big basket, I think, for Putnam because Woodstock has the momentum on their side. There's a long three, rattles out by Mitchell. And a good rebound there from Diara, ripping it away, leading to a run out for Putnam. Getting to a frenetic pace. And we get a foul. And it's on Kasprzik, that should be his third, and it is. 
Well, you could see after the big play from Lofton, Kasperzik wanted to come right back at him and try and get in that one-on-one -on -one duel. Good decision to kick it out, though, but unfortunately commits a potentially costly foul on the other end. Perez misses the first. Senior out of the Bronx. Second foul shot, also no good. And the rebound deflects right to Kasperzik. Both teams struggling to make free throws so far in the second half. It's gonna become even more important down the stretch. Kasperzik drives, gets off the shot, it's good, and a foul. Kasperzik splitting the double team, that dynamic quick quickness, and a tough floater there. Get another look at it. Watch the split of the ball screen. And again, it's the same thing. That contact is in the side. If you're trying to take a charge and you're not going to get that contact in the center of your chest, you're better off to not fall. Just stay, stay straight up. You've got to take that contact in the center of your chest. Jose Perez was just a half a second too late. Kaz Brzezek finished the free throw. Lead is down. To four. Got Mabala there going over the top. All of a sudden, Woodstock's got all the momentum. Looks like they're going to switch. We're going to see some man to man. Now, this is interesting because they've been foul prone. Next foul, they're going to send Woodstock into the bonus. So I'm a little surprised to see him go man. Rodriguez. Driving, puts up the shot, no good. We get a whistle and an offensive foul. Shows you what I know. Well, a contact came basically underneath the hoop and that is what Rodriguez is claiming, but nonetheless, that is his fourth. Well, it's NCAA rules, so it's gotta be outside of the cylinder. That time it might have been below the cylinder. Eleven minutes remaining. Putnam breaking the pressure, driving and laying it in. Mubala. Mubala showing a little bit of playmaking ability. He can fall in love with trying to make plays off the dribble sometimes, but showing he's got that budding versatility in his game. Weaving his way into the paint for a shot. Off the mark by Martin, but the rebound was put in. Ja'Kai Dotton, what a tough play. Going into traffic and coming up with the putback. That's his first field goal and a big one. And that runner is put in. Degree of difficulty on that one was very high. I think Woodstock would have been very content to allow him to have that shot, but a tough, tough finish. Left baseline, that shot's put in. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, both teams putting on now. Tough shots on both ends. Ty Perry with a big time pull up there. <laughs> Another look at this. Jose Perez runs him off the line, two dribbles, finds open space, rises up with that same high release. Pressure being applied, Mustangs break it. Baseline shot, no good, but on his attempt, Mabala is fouled. Well, when Mabala puts the ball on the floor, he puts pressure not only on opposing defenses, but also on officials because he creates contact. that torpedo free throw, but he's made his last couple. Had 14 points yesterday. Been very important here today as well. Makes one of two. Five point lead for Putnam Science.
Joey Kasperzik having yeah, he, a he big wants second the ball half. Screen. Yeah. Wants that to go to work. Eight second half points. Great oh, pass. great no look, but not able to finish was Dotton. And as Putnam came ahead, we got a whistle and a foul. It was a terrific pass to start that possession. Fouls on Dotton, his first. by Langford, way off the mark. Both teams are now in the bonus the rest of this second half. Well, it's one thing to shoot free throws in an empty gym by yourself. It's another one in a national semifinal with a terrific crowd and intense energy. Great pass by Kasbrzyk to Gooden, using the rim as protection, laid it in. Ja'Kai Dotton with a big time finish. He's come up huge in the last couple of minutes. Big games are nothing new to him after his history at Cambridge Ringe and Latin. Cam Gooden, how about that finish? Showing his athleticism. Gooden now with seven. Good pass out of the double and a nice secondary pass there. And that shot's put in by Dotton. Well, again, his strength and his toughness is his calling card, and that has come out in the last couple of minutes. He's got six points inside the paint among the big bodies in the last few minutes alone. Let's stop really stepping up the pressure. Lofton, nice shuffle pass to his cutting teammate. The lay-in for Mabala, he has 14 and we've got a timeout. Great timing on that dive cut and another pretty pass from Lofton. Pinching the second defender and then putting that pass right on the money at just the right time. Get another look at it here. Watch the way he engages Mitchell and then shoves it off to Mabala just perfectly before Perry could get down there to recover. Oh, you and I had said at the top, we really didn't expect this semifinal as well, our second semifinal, and the finals to be low scoring affairs. They assumed they'd be in the 80s or 90s. This one here, even though we have eight minutes remaining, just 52-47. No, but the second half, the, the tempo's picked up a little bit. I think the first half was more of a, a defensive grind. Uh, we talked about how, how both teams were, were really uh, just defending at a very high level. Putnam in their zone, Woodstock with their various, various presses. In the second half, though, both teams continuing to defend, but guys are starting to make more plays. So I think we're going to have a, a very exciting final eight minutes here. Woodstock have outscored Putnam 24-22 in the second half. And there's still, as we said, eight minutes, a little over eight minutes remaining. The second semifinal, Tilton and Northfield Mount Hermon will tip at one o'clock. I think with, with Woodstock showing the full court pressure, it really quickens the pace. Well, You're not seeing Putnam do that. They like it more in a half court look in the, these situations. The thing about playing a team who plays, who pressures you for 40 minutes, is sometimes you don't see the, the virtues of that until late in the game when fatigue starts to set, set in. Perry up top, and he hits the three! Another big shot. He's either on or he's not, and today he is cooking. Putnam's lead down to two. Again, Woodsock with the pressure. Mustangs get it ahead and settle things down. 15 on the shot clock. Trying to take the ball out of Kyle Lofton's hands, which I think is a good decision. Obala's runner is no good. The rebound deflects out, they say off of Lankford, 
And that will give the ball back to the Centaurs. So now Woodstock with a chance to tie or take their first lead since the game's opening minutes. Last time we were tied, it was four to four. Mitchell backs it out for Kasperzik. Nothing there. Ty Perry driving, feeds low left baseline. Dotton. Shot clock inside five. Dotton drives, lays it up and in. Well, he recognized he had a mismatch with Mabala on him, made a smart decision to drive the big, and now we've got a tie game. With 6.35 remaining. The Centaurs have really battled to get this momentum back. Can they sustain it? Lankford. Mabala. Banks it in. A tough shot. You know, that one goes in, but again, I'm just not so sure that's the type of shot you want down the stretch of a, a close game. Woodstock extending their defense there, taking Putnam out of their offensive rhythm. A lot of lobbed passes. You can see, conversely, a lot more crisp down here at this end right now. And Trey Mitchell bullying his way, willing his way to get that basket. He's got nine. That's just his first field goal in the second half. Big shot. And able to hit his Perez. Terrific press break that time, moving the ball beautifully through the middle of the court. Wow. They're cooking now. Joey Kasperzik, Ty Perry, everybody getting into the act, and we got a tie game. Ball a little out of control. Now Woodstock with a chance to take their first lead since we were just a couple of minutes into this one. Kai Dotton again. I don't know that anybody's got more points in the paint than this guy scoring at will. Woodstock goes up two. Now they're going to go up four if they can finish this one off. They do. Akoi, Akoi. That is now 61-57. It is getting a bit frenetic. And now we get a hell ball or a foul. And I think we get a foul. Yep, Mabala will go to the free throw line. Both teams in the bonus. Woodstock's going to use the timeout. And we do get a break here with 4.31 remaining. And it is the Centaurs with their first lead. It's a four-point lead, or check that, a three-point lead. It's four-point no, it lead. it is four-point lead. I only got to be in math. There you 61 go. 61-57, Centaurs really battled at them to get this lead back. It didn't come easily. Well, they got hot, and you can see there Joey Kasperzik making the big-time shot. Ty Perry had done it before, so Guy's coming alive. Here's another highlight. Kasper's like, look at that pass. Out of control. Finds Ja'Kai Dotton. Ja'Kai Dotton's points in the paint right now. He's really playing like a 6-1 power forward for Woodstock. Just dominating the action. Then most recently, Rodriguez, great move to switch to his left hand to avoid that defender. And suddenly, Woodstock come all the way back, and they're up four. 4.31 on the clock. Now you see Tony Bergeron, the first-year head coach for... Woodstock Academy, again, this is the first year they are playing at this level and this prep level. And of course, he was with Commonwealth Academy for the last five seasons. He's been with a, a couple of programs and boy, he's done a great job to get this team to the semifinal and they are four and a half minutes if they can hold on to the four point lead from a uh, chance in the final of this national championship. He made his first appearance in this event with uh, American Christian back when Tyreek Evans was on that team. Lamont Momo Jones on American Christian as well. Mubala is at the line.
17 now for Josh Mabala. An important hit from Mabala, another unsigned guy. Try and get some momentum going back in Putnam's direction. Misses the second. Be interesting to see if, if Putnam tries to deny or double Casper Zick the ball. He's been so hot here. Perry driving, baseline jumper short, rebound to Flex. Taken by Woodstock. The shot by Dotton was deflected. He's double teamed, but he's able to back it out. Kasperzik, wide open three, got it. Big shot, Joey Kasperzik coming alive. Lead is up to six now. That's their biggest lead of the day. 3.45 remaining. Langford's driving, his floater is no good. Rebound to Flex. A cook, a cook gives for Lofton, and it's Batted out of bounds. Trey Mitchell went vertical, made a terrific defensive play that time on Kyle Lofton, but Putnam now coming back in with the size. Comes a cook off the stagger. Quick head pass inbounds. Perez, the shot is good, and we get a foul. And he's excited. So what they did there, they ran a cook off that stagger screen. Perez, who was setting the second of the two, when his man hedged or helped on a cook, he went right to the rim. And that is the fourth foul on Joey Kasperzik. Perez hits the free throw, he's got 16. And it's back to a one possession game. Every bit as good of a game as we hoped. Don't stop there. Kasperzik now playing with four fouls. Does he drive or just decide to shoot from the perimeter? Don't want to pick up your fifth on an offensive foul. No, you certainly don't. And you can bet that Putnam will try and Wall up, beat him to the spot, and take that charge if they can. Well, they say it's always tough to contain wild horses, but Kasperzik's game is, yeah, he can take the three, but he loves to dodge and weave and drive. And That's boy, when he's at his best, yeah. yeah, going to the rim. There he goes. He passes down low. The shot by Dotton is off the mark. Rebound deflects out off of a centaur. Frankfurt ahead at midcourt for Lofton. He wants the three. Perez spinning. Shots way off but on the weak side. Asunier picks up the wild shot and banks it in. Well, the shot was wild, but what it did was it drew a secondary defender. And with Putnam's bigs, if someone rotates off them, they're going to have a field day on the offensive glass. And that three is put up and in by Mitchell. Absolutely huge shot from Trey Mitchell, the junior with the rainbow three, pivotal play. He's got a dozen. Strong baseline drive by Perez. Boy, what he's coming alive in the yeah. second half. He really has, what a game. Got 14 second half points. Another one for Trey Mitchell. This time it's short offensive rebound. The putback by Rodriguez, no good. We got a tie game. And we get a timeout. What a game. Get another look at this. Langford gets Casper Zick to commit, was waiting for it so he could throw it up. Asunie hammers it down, 67-67. Minute 50 on the clock. Again, we have said this pretty much throughout the broadcast. There really isn't just one person, each team 
needs to go to in a tight game like this. Really all five players on the floor can make that big shot or shots. But what do you expect here down the minute 50? Well, I, I think that in a game like this, whoever's going to win is going to have multiple guys step up. And we've already seen that tonight. You talked about Jose Perez for Putnam. For Woodstock, it's been Joey Kasperzik, who struggled in the first half, has come alive, played incredibly in the second half. Ty Perry done the same thing. So this has been uh, guys rising to the occasion and making big, big plays. The second semifinal between Tilton School and Northfield Mount Hermon will tip at one. At least it's scheduled to tip at one. And some of the players are leaking out just beyond the stands to our right, getting a peek at this one. There you see him there. That's Tilton there on to our right. Northfield to our left. Cash percent. Stutter stepping his way, backs it out. Mitchell will drive. Shots blocked. Got his own rebound. It was deflected right to him. Now he gets Loose stripped. Ball. Yep. And it grab is. it. Perez is open. Two Perez. toughest guys in the gym right there, Dotton and Perez. No surprise they were the ones hustling it down. Well, Perez didn't have the numbers, and that was very heady of him not to try to force it. Backed it out. Now it's about clock management. They're overloading here, trying to set Lofton up for the pick and roll. Lofton on Kasperzik. That shot was deflected by Mitchell. He came over to help out. Five Just seconds on the shot clock here, and Putnam's going to talk it over. With a minute remaining, tied at 67. Timeout called by Putnam. So with a minute on the clock, five on the shot clock, that I think is the most important here. Putnam's gotta get a good inbounds pass and you, you always say when you see the sideline uh, player inbounds the ball towards midcourt, you want the inbounds to go towards the iron, don't you agree? Well, I think they want something going to the rim, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and if again, I, I think so much of, of Putnam's offensive attack isn't necessarily the first shot, but the second shot. And so if they can draw a secondary defender, get on the offensive glass, have an opportunity for a tip, and that's as much why you want to get something going to the rim as anything. We've got a near capacity house here at Connecticut College in New London, Connecticut. This is the what blizzard <laughs> National Prep Basketball Championship. It's our first of two semifinals that we'll have for you here. They got about three, four inches here along the uh, southeastern portion of Connecticut. The uh, northwest portion, they got about two feet. Did not deter the oh, players. Oh, just threw it away. Yeah, bad inbounds pass. Two for one opportunity here for Woodstock. If they manage the clock, oh, it doesn't look like they're gonna go fast. Perry. Almost lost the dribble. He now drives, gets off the shot, and it's blocked. Solid defense by Asunye, and now we get a whistle as Lankford was double teamed, and I believe Putnam got a timeout called. Well, an absolutely pivotal one, too, because he looked like he was about to turn it over. So a timeout was called by the Mustangs. So here's the interesting thing. You have a tie game, 67 all, 32 seconds left, but 27 seconds on the shot clock. So what that means is no matter what happens here, Woodstock is going to get, well, Woodstock should get the ball back. There's a five second differential. So Putnam cannot hold for one here. They've got to go. We'll see if, how quickly they decide to go, but Woodstock should get another chance whether they get a stop or even if Putnam is able to score. Now we'll see if Putnam can burn as much of the remaining 27 on their shot clock 
meaning if they don't hit the shot and Woodstock does get a rebound, you don't want to give them too much time, but there will be at least, if they go right to 27, there'll be five seconds on the game clock remaining for Woodstock, so you got to think they're going to wait till well, maybe tw uh, well, the other seven or five seconds on the shot clock. I would be surprised if a Tony Bergeron team allowed Putnam to dictate pace here. So I, I would expect Woodstock, and, and I may be wrong, this, is, this isn't necessarily what they should do, it's just what I would expect. Some kind of trap or something to dictate the action. That, that is typically what you would see from a, uh, from a Tony Bergeron coach team. And here, indeed, you, you can see in the back of your picture there, Woodstock extending their defense. So this isn't going to be hold it and pick your time to go necessarily, although they're falling back a little bit. So I stand corrected. Really key for the guys guarding the ball to be able to do so without needing help. Because if the bigs have to help, Putnam's bigs have a chance for a putback. Eight on the shot clock. Five seconds now, out of top, Perez's three, off the back iron, no good. Five seconds. They gotta get up the floor quickly. Half court three. Oh. <laughs> and we will go to overtime. Five more minutes, why not? It deserves it. What a game. And it'll be the second overtime for Woodstock in this National Basketball Championship Tournament. Of course, they uh, defeated the reigning champs, Brewster Academy, yesterday on a Joey Kasperzik runner. Joey Kasperzik almost had his second game winner there. That one was about an inch off. Here's the final Putnam position. I'm surprised they went for a three. I thought this was going to be going to the rim. And then Kasperzik a chance to win a good defense there. From DeMar Lankford being able to stay with the ball, showing his hands the entire time so as to not foul. So they'll put five minutes up on the clock. Now, the key here for Woodstock Academy uh, is two players are in serious foul trouble. I think the key is Kasperzik. He's got four, has 16 points here today. Luis Rodriguez also has four. He's only scored a couple of points. But Kasperzak has been a big key for uh, the Woodstock comeback in the second half, and he's got to be careful. Oh, he's been huge, and Ty Perry's been huge. Interesting to see Chalen Martin out there instead of Ty Perry to start. Maybe just getting Perry a quick breather. I think Putnam's got to get back to, to playing their type of basketball. I really thought Woodstock dictated play and tempo for the majority of that second half. When Putnam starts getting to the rim and attacking the offensive glass, that's when they're, they're really hard to beat. White possession, guys. White possession. Tap control by the Mustangs. They'll have the first possession in this overtime. Curl cut by Perez. Shot no good. Offensive rebound and the putback by Osunie. But see, that's what it is. You attract the second defender and then you let your bigs go get it on the offensive glass. When they do that, they are very, very effective. 11 now for Osuna Sunye. Trey Mitchell trying to get that deep real estate. Mitchell backing his way in, turn around, no good. And the rebound for Osunye. DeMar Lankford, the sophomore with the ball, he has played huge minutes. An outstanding defensive player here. High ball screen. Now they're gonna, looks like they may get a second one. 10 on the shot clock. Lofton's runner, no good, but he got tripped on his way to the shot. Yeah, should be on Martin. And that's his second. Yeah, a little bit of a late call there. Lofton now 7-9 from the charity stripe here today. First made foul shot. 
and his first attempt in the second half. Chance to push it to four. It's gonna stay at three, one possession game. Ty Perry's back in now, so a very short rest. Langford stays on him. Cash present, backs it out. Mitchell's three, no good. Oh, beautiful weak side, rebound put back by Doughton. Ja'Kai Doughton, and I'm saying it in jest, but the best 6-1 power forward in the country. <laughs> I mean, he's, uh, that's what he's been tonight. I think he's got 10 points in the paint, doing an amazing job. Just, that, that's really what he is. He's a guy who gives his team whatever they need to have the best chance to win. Sunier, great move, quick spin. Yeah, it was, it was very quick. He sold middle, got Mitchell to bite, and then came right back. And that's just raw, unpolished talent. I'm not sure that's something he's practiced. That was just instinct. Mitchell's shot blocked. Again, the rebound. Dalton's shot is blocked. They're just so long and so athletic down there. Pass for six runner. got a piece of it again. Yeah. That's three blocks in one possession. Two and a half remaining in this first overtime. Lofton driving and Kasperzik. has got to be careful. Shot's no good. Yeah, really good defense there by Kasperzik. Didn't give him an angle and stayed straight up to avoid the foul. Going baseline, Dalton shots blocked out of bounds, but they say no. There's a uh, blocking foul on well, that he play. Was, he was straight up, but it's NCAA rules, and he was in the cylinder. So that's the... Uh, And you can hear the dialogue there. Tom Espinosa saying he was there. Mike Scanlon saying he was in the arc. So I think both people right. That's four. So now Sunier has to be very careful. <laughs> and in tight games like these, you gotta make your free throws. You see that last sequence. And he was in the cylinder. One of two for Dalton. He has 14. The lead is two. And uh, Putnam will call a timeout. It's a full timeout. Two minutes, one second remaining in this first overtime of this first of two semifinals of this National Prep Basketball Championship. And this first one has been <laughs> outstanding. And I uh, fully anticipate the second to outdo this one. <laughs> I, you know, I, <laughs> the way these is, games have gone. This has, been, uh, this has been as good of a prep school game as I've seen in a long, long time. And give both of these teams credit. I mean, they have, they have played hard. They have played smart. There has been, this is, a, this is a very intense rivalry. And this has been a a competitive but clean game from start to finish. I think it's it's lived up to all expectations in every category. Man, you got to look at Woodstock and Kasprzyk now has played several minutes. The end of the first half and yeah. now the uh, three so far in this overtime. Well, and remember they the went to they went to overtime yesterday too. Right. So then you then you start to say. When does fatigue become a factor? Thankfully, they've got tremendous depth, but this core out here right now, especially Ja'Kai Dotton and Ty Perry, are, have been instrumental. And Joey Kasperzik now getting a brief rest, so we've seen that from Tony Bridger on this overtime too. He stole Ty Perry, it was only about 30 seconds off the game clock, but it was about two minutes of rest. Now he's doing the same for Joey Kasperzik. Also a little bit of an offensive defensive move here, not allowing him the chance to get his fifth foul on this defensive possession. I'm sure he'll have him right back in for offense. All right, off the timeout. Mustangs with possession, nice feed to a cutting Perez. Shots no good, but we get a whistle and another foul. Perez always leading with the body. We've seen that from both teams. If you can create that contact and the defender is at all off balance or still moving, more than likely you're gonna get the call. 
Third foul on Trey Mitchell. <laughs> 19 now for Jose Perez, the senior from the Bronx. He is headed to Gardner-Webb. Still a one possession game. He's gonna be great at Gardner-Webb. Just such a, he's a winner. Makes one of two, the lead is three. Oh, he walks. That's a double dribble on Martin. Again, not a guy who is typically in the game at this, this venture. Come up with some big plays down the stretch, but made a costly mistake that time. Opportunity here for Putnam. Kyle Lofton almost lost it there. Minute 20 remaining. Ten on the shot clock. This is Perez. Osunier back for Perez. His three, no good. Offensive rebound is put back and up and in by Lankford. Damar Lankford, as big of a bucket as he's had in his career to date. He's been in there for defense, but he got a huge put back there. 45 seconds remaining. He wants to shoot this. Long three rims out by Perry. Offensive rebound is put in by Rodriguez. Bringing it back to just a one possession game now. So here's the dilemma on the Woodstock sideline right now. There's 39.9 seconds left in this game and a new shot clock. It's a three, three point game. So do you A, elect to defend and try and just get a stop or do you be foul? I, I think what they're gonna do is probably something in the middle and look to pressure and create offense from their defense. But uh, that is certainly the decision that, that faces Tony Bergeron and his staff right now. And without a question, a extremely difficult decision here. It's 50-50, a lot of people say, oh, you wanna foul quickly, put them on the foul line, then the other guys say, no, defend, get the steal, try to get the bad pass. Well, you know what it is, and I, 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 I'm, I'm probably guilty of this, I'm probably a talking head myself, so I, I, so I preface what I'm about to say with that, but you hear the talking head say, oh, they should do this, they should do that. Well, if you don't know that team, and you don't know, no one knows better than Tony Bergeron what his kids are capable and most likely to do. So it's easy to say the statistics tell you to do this, the statistics to tell you to do that. It's a lot harder to say, okay, this is what my specific team has the best chance of executing properly. Thirty-nine point nine on the game clock. We're in the first overtime. Three point lead for Putnam Science. Woodstock, full court pressure. And there's the pressure, okay. So it was the, uh, the full court pressure, one trap, and then they're gonna send him to the free throw line, extend the game as long as possible. And you know what, given the fact that, that Putnam has had their fair share of struggles at the free throw line down the stretch, I think that is a, uh, that's the smarter move. You gave, your, gave yourself a chance to force a quick turnover and now you're gonna try and stretch it out. Oh. Wow, wow. Talk about a good bounce. Very forgiving iron. Woodstock gonna freeze the shooter a little bit here, calling a timeout. Got a four point game, 34 seconds on the clock. A lot can happen in 34 seconds, even if this, Especially in a game like this. Yeah, the, the, the way teams get the basketball up the floor as quick as they do. Well, and again, these are these are kids. You know, these are 18 year old, 18 year old kids. So there's gonna be, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 34 seconds, but I can promise you that there's gonna be a mistake or two. Get a look at Marcus Zigorowski there, getting ready 
for Tilton's game against Northfield Mount Hermon. This guy has had a heck of a week. It started with 57 points in an overtime win in the Nepsack semifinals on Saturday. Then he came out, led his team to a Nepsack championship on Sunday. Took a day off on Monday, and now he's played three. This will be his third game in three days here. So overall, that's five games in six days. And if they win, have a chance to make it six and six tonight. Yeah. Second free throw is no good. But the rebound for Asunier. Another offensive rebound for Putnam. That has been the story of the game. Woodstock's starting to hang their head a little bit there, but there's a lot of game to be played here. Even if he makes both of these, it's still just a two possession. You got 30 seconds left to play. This is not celebration time either. First by Lofton is good. Six point game, you gotta get as quick of a score as possible if you're Woodstock. There's a long three and the shot was blocked. Curry was hit as well, was looking for a call, didn't get it. And now Putnam is on the verge of getting to a spot in the final. said in these type games, the high level of uh, importance, especially in a national championship tournament, free throws are always so important. They always seem to come into play, and here Putnam is making their free throws down the stretch. But I'll tell you what, what a game between two great teams, and what a season from these teams as well. on Rodriguez, he is done. Putnam's gonna move on here, but you really can't say enough about the level that both teams brought to this game. It's been collective, uh, competitive intensity, but, but class from both teams. I, I think both of these schools have a lot to be proud of. Tom Espinoza taking out some of his starters with 10 seconds left. So Putnam will move on to the championship game tonight at 7.30 against the winner of Northfield Mount Hermon in Tilton School, which comes up next. And that will wrap it up. 80 to 72 is our final. As Putnam Science raises their record to 37 and four on the season. We'll move on. They have punched their ticket for one of the uh, two spots in the national championship final. We'll take a break and come back and wrap this one up. Stay tuned. Maddie always just, she gave it her hardest and what she wanted everyone else to do was to give it their hardest. She always put everyone before herself in every situation. Her personality, it's just Maddie was, she was born to be a leader. She lit up every single room when she walked in it and she just had so much love for everyone in her life. I think she'd want us to live in the day and she'd want us to take it one day at a time. Hey, Mr. Thompson, you know how you were so mad about going over on your mobile data plan? Well, we're Cox customers, and this is one of over 500,000 Cox hotspots. 
totally included in most Cox internet packages. Look, go to your mobile settings, click on Cox Wi-Fi, then plug in your Cox username and password, and then you're on Wi-Fi. And you can like stream that video of my band, literally no problem. Find free hotspots because you're a Cox High Speed Internet customer. Cox.com slash learn. Your View celebrates Women's History Month with Dana Zimbrick and Classics for Kids. So Classics for Kids is an organization that brings live musical experiences to children throughout San Diego County where students come on field trips and learn all about our orchestra and all about arts and performing arts. Now in its 25th year, the kid-friendly classical music education program inspires academic growth and creativity. We really hope that children get to experience music and the performing arts in a way that will ignite a part of their brain that other, you know, other subjects maybe don't and and also give them ideas about how to be creative, how to be innovative. Classics for Kids allows more than 30,000 elementary school students a year to experience the transformational power of music. My work with Classics for Kids has truly given me a purpose and a mission to my work in music and we really can cover all the emotions and all the colors of our humanity um, and so to be able to give that to the students is just amazing. This celebration of Women's History Month is proudly brought to you by Your View. Connecticut College, we're at the Loose Field House, the National Prep Basketball Championship. Our first semifinal goes to Putnam Science. They win it 80 to 72 in overtime. I'm Glenn Conticello. Adam Finkelstein has stepped away to talk with some of the coaches prepping for game two. We'll have the second semifinal coming up for you in about 20 or so minutes, but this one here was high octane, folks. If you are just tuning in, you missed a great one, but if you've been with us all morning, it really was outstanding. Both these teams battled. They played very hard. We'll take a look at some of the highlights. And really, both sides were filling it up from long range. That was Trey Mitchell. He finished with a dozen points here today. I think Woodstock was expecting maybe a little bit more offensively from him. He just wasn't getting the looks. But Jose Perez for Putnam, he finished with 19, had a huge second half with 15 points. That alley-oop that time and finished by Asunye, and he had a big day, finishing with 13. Perez led the way with 17. Asunye had 13, but uh, Josh Mabala for Putnam Science, 13 second half points. He finished with 17. As again, you see the offensive rebound and the uh, putback by DeMar Langford. Again, in these type of games, it's difficult to say it's one player or another on a team that needs to have a big day because both teams, all teams at this level, go very deep. And we saw that here in this first semifinal. All right, that wraps up our broadcast of game number one. We'll take a short break, come back, and have the second semifinal for you. So make sure you come back here on Cox Your View.